where I'm in the view, it's the XML. Anyone still remember about this one? Anyone? Uh, is there a by layout ID? And by layout component, we can access the design page. True. So yes, exactly. Um, last time, uh, you guys know that how do we access the view is by find view by ID. Basically, it's a function. Uh, it's a function uh, that asks the ID of the view that we are trying to refer to. And by um, supplying the view type, aka the view data type, uh, let's say um, text view or button or something else that kind of thing, and you pass the ID, you can refer to the specific components of the UI, correct? Good, but that's not good enough. Let me tell you that's not good enough using find view by ID, why? Well, which is, you know, pretty boilerplating, right? Um, because when you see the code full of like find view by ID, find view by ID, like you repeat it like the whole 20 lines, of code is just like find view by ID. It will be pretty chaotic. So um, I will uh, try to introduce you to something new. So entropy binding is another feature that makes our life even more easier, basically. <laughs> because yeah, view binding is a feature that allows you to more easily write codes that interact with views. Well, because we are, uh, since we are talking about the views, once view binding is enabled in a module, it generates a binding class. So, yeah, we'll see that later. For each XML layout file present in that module, an instance of a binding class contains direct reference to all views that have an ID. You have to understand that have an ID in the corresponding layout. So, remember that. The scroll view, um, let's say you have like, um, what I got use? Uh, relative layout, yeah? Uh, relative uh, layout, and then you have like, let's say, um, a, a few text view uh, inside the relative layout. And then you don't have ID for like two of them. You just can access the two that have the ID. You cannot access the two that have got no ID at all. So you have to have an ID for each uh, elements that you want to access in your um, logic part of, uh, you know, your code. So how do we do this? Well, basically, um, if we are reverting to the code, um, you know, quote unquote, the code, uh, we are uh, putting it on the app uh, build the Gradle to enable it. Um, so yeah, Android build features, view binding true. That's it. Just add this line and it's already good to go. So without further ado, let's uh, um, open an Android uh, studio session. <laughs> I hope you guys already reading up a project <laughs> or just, you know, just, just open um, your last project or um, yeah, anything. I will just um, make a new one, make a new project uh, from the start until the beginning, we will use the same project. At least I will use the same project and I will start it from scratch, right? Right, so let me share another screen. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, uh, let me okay here uh, can you see my android studio now oh yeah yeah i'm so sorry <laughs> actually i didn't know how to do that again i already did once that oh it's here right oh yeah there you go full screen i think is it oh I think it's stop the share screen. Is it now? Okay, um, yeah, good. It, it's still small, yeah? 
Ah, uh, then um, what, what should I do? Uh, presentation mode. But it will like close the the left window, I think. It, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Where do I do that? <laughs> I am so sorry. I never customized this kind of thing. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, this one. This one, yeah. Yeah, there's a font size option. Yeah. Okay. Let's try eighteen. Uh, oh damn, that's so huge. <laughs> Did I just no? I don't think I I make that thing bigger. It's just no, control plus the option theme. is also. It's just the theme, yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, is it on the editor? Oh, there you go. The font. There. Uh, size thirteen. Let's make it eighteen. Okay. Let's apply. Uh oh, did I? Oh, I think I have to reopen the Android Studio. Let me close the Android Studio ones. Um, wait a second, guys. Um, I'm pretty deal to doing presentation in Android Studio. <laughs> so yeah, let me just try to close all instance of Android Studio and let me uh, reopen Android Studio. See if it works. <sighs> so, yeah. I'm still reopening. Hey, wait a minute. It doesn't change the editor. Ah, uh, Fondo. Yeah, it doesn't change it. Why? <laughs> oh no, I'm so sorry. Um. 20, can I apply it? Oh, I think I know how. Yes, I get it. <laughs> finally. Um, yeah, fine. Yeah, finally I got it. That's because I, I'm customizing the wrong theme. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, you should uh, see that now. It's a bigger one, I think. Is it uh, seen? Yeah, good, good. Uh, thank God. Okay, so um, we already uh, uh, talked about Android Studio in the last uh, session, and now I hope you guys already been a bit familiar with Android uh, Studio and the uh, Android uh, structure, basically the the Android project structure. So here, what we're going to do is we are going into the build Gradle, but the app version on it. Okay, this one. So the the app version here. Oh, it's still scanning files. I think. Do not know what it scans though. Okay. Anyway, um, so here we can add um, uh, an option here called build feature. Yes. And then view binding. That's it. Okay. So we add a, a feature here, build feature with S. And then don't forget if you're changing something from the build.gradle, you should sync the Gradle. So we are now syncing. Um, let's wait a few moments. Okay. It's already um, synced. Now, um, let's just say we want to make something. Um, let's just go to layout and let's make something. Okay, uh, we have a text view here. And then like ID, 
uh, let's say ID and then um, test um, TV test, for example. Right. So now it has an ID. Right. So how do we access this ID? Basically, we go to the this one is the on un main activity. So we go to the main activity .kt, which is the code line. And then let's just say um, here, uh, we have to set up some things in 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 this um, uh, particular thingy. So what we do basically is doing this. So you make a new um, you need uh make a new variable um it's called well you can call it every you know anything that you want basically so here oh the the data type for these um variable that you will make i use binding for this one because it's a view binding you know so well uh basically it's generated it's auto generated so i already said that view binding will generate its own binding class right so we're gonna cast that uh into this uh, variable so the type data is activity activity main binding there you go activity main binding right equals null because we do not have it for one um and then we make another one which called binding this one it's um and you set a getter which equals to uh the one that we just made before uh there you go and what you do to this one basically is um just um here after the super on create you change the binding, this one, into activity main binding, the inflate, right? And then just um, put layout inflator in there, and you're done, basically. So here, usually we have like set content field and then r.layout.activity main. No, we do not need that. We just need binding.root. There you go. So, for example, you want to access the text view that we just made, right? So, how do you access that? Well, basically, you just go binding dot. You can see there you go. TV test. It's already generated. So you just go this. It already goes like uh, uh, that's a text view. So you can go like um, dot text equals and so on. You can do that right away without making like um, a lot of variables that um, like, let's say private fall, uh, TV test um, in the type of uh, text view, and then you like find view by ID, blah, blah, blah. It's so boilerplate rather than this one, because this one, what you do is basically copy this one and then just access it by binding the, the ID. That's it. It's that easy. So that's view binding, All right? Let me start my uh, emulator because I haven't start my emulator, I think. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we do not now uh, uh, need emulator for now. Let's just uh, leave it started. Okay. All right. So let's get back into the slides, shall we? Let me. Okay. Okay, so can you see my slides again? Okay, good. Thank you. Um so, um the thing that we will discuss next is something that is really important. So, uh, you know, pay a little bit more attention. Why? Because this is really a basic stuff that you need to understand before we go into the more advanced stuff later in the session. So, well, application isn't built, is, you know, made by only one screen, right? You, 
for example, Google Play Store, again, you go to search uh, and then you search uh, anything, let's say Instagram, and you click um, for one of the app that is available, that is one view. And then the second you just click an app, you move into the app detail screen, which is another view, right? And you see another app um, having like uh, the recommendation under, under the um, Google Play Store, and you click that, that's another view again. So there cannot be an app that is literally just one screen. It's just not possible and it's just unuseful, basically. So, well, now the question is, um, how do you build an application that has multiple screens, right? That is the uh, question for now. Because, well, as I said before, there is no application that is, you know, basically having exactly one screen you know a, a really static uh thingy that doesn't really change which is unuseful um you know uh, when you think about that <laughs> you just have an application that is really literally like uh, a landing page or something which is unuseful people will not download your app i can guarantee that so how do we overcome this so well we make multiple views but how do you make a multiple views to answer this question, we need to know the basic of layouts. The really basic. I'm not talking about relative layout, constraint layout, no. We're talking about the actual construction block, which is activity and fragment. So activity and fragment is a really, really base blocks of UI. Um, yeah, so there is a difference. There are a difference. It's not only one difference, but um, there are a difference. Uh, there are differences. So, um, pardon me for my grammar. But yeah, there are differences uh, between activities and fragments. So what is an activity and fragment? Activity and fragment is a main building block, as I said before, for making a screen in Android, right? Activity is a block to construct a user interface. That's a really basic one the one that is running probably have an activity on your devices. Fragments, in other hand, uh, are a reusable blocks that can be swapped on top of an activity. So on top of an activity, you have fragments. Okay, so yeah, it's really that easy. Activity is the uh, base, literally the base. And then the fragment is on top of activity that can be swapped. Okay. So, well, then you ask how to move, right? How to move between activities. Well, let's make this simple by just saying how to move between activities. And here it comes. No, we're not talking about John Cena. We are talking about intents. So, yeah, it, it, we are talking about intents. So, what is intents? Intents is an intent. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good explanation. Intents, it is literally an intent to move to other screen, aka the activity, right? So um, intents have like two types. There is an explicit intent. Uh, explicit intents is fulfilling the request using a specific components in your app or a specific third party app. It's really specific. You have no freedom to choose whatever a button do or something, you know? For example, you have, uh, 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 let's say in the Google Play Store again, you have the download button, right? Download buttons, um, when you download it, it will install the app. You have nothing to do anything uh, than downloading the app, right? You cannot do, let's say, share the app with the download button. No, you cannot. Right, or you cannot choose any application that will handle the download. Right, that's explicit intent. Now, what is another one? Well, basic <laughs> implicit intent. Implicit intent provides a generic action the app can perform by giving enough information to the other app that matches a criteria. So, what by uh, what I mean by criteria is something that is unspecific. For example. Have you ever go into a chat, uh, let's say WhatsApp, okay, WhatsApp, and then you want to send a picture, right? When you open the menu, 
you will then like uh, it's it's not currently on WhatsApp, but in some cases, um, when you uh, want to pick a picture, right, it will like uh, pop up. Where do you want to pick the picture? Whether you want it from the files, you want it from your gallery, you want it from your Google Photos or something. That's an implicit intent. You don't really tell the application which exact application you want to use, right? While explicit intents, you are exactly telling, please, let, let's say like this, please open the gallery app. So you have no freedom about what application you choose to open the, uh, let's say, to pick the image, right? While implicit, you have the freedom. You can choose any app that serves as a picture provider. That's an implicit intent, right? So, right. So, well, let's just go into Android Studio, right? Because um, we're going to make an intent. So, um, let's, let me just stop share and we share again our Android application. There you go. Oh, I have to share the screen anyway to, to, to hear you I how. Well, uh, let me just share my screen. Then. <laughs> okay, share content, share my screens. Okay, can it be seen now? Thank you. All right, so um, here we have the, the last one, the main activity. I haven't really done anything on it. I already uh, fire up my emulator. It's on BlueStacks, but you can use any emulator you have. Um, but uh, you know, I, I I choose BlueStack because Google Emulator always crashed on my computer. I do not know why. Um, let's just run this application for um, for a bit so that it doesn't really uh, build that long. Let's say uh, we change the. We already see here uh, is Hello World. Let's make it like um, Hello. Hello, hello everyone. <laughs> I, I ran out of ideas. Um, but anyway, let's just uh, start to start the build. While we were um, starting the build, let's just make another uh, activity because we want to move from one activity to another activity, right? So, well, it's it's that simple. You go into here, your left um, panel. You go into your package name uh, and here I got like com.michaelricky.androidgtsc and then you um, right click oh it doesn't do anything wait oh there you go uh, right click and then where is it new and then activity right here you can choose anything but I will choose empty activity for now right so you go into empty activity you will then prompt uh, to uh, enter any activity name, let's say a uh, second activity. Oops, I'm sorry. There you go, activity seconds, general layout file. Let it be, just finish. Okay, it will then generate a second activity here. Well, basically have nothing. <laughs> So, oh, the launch succeeded. There you go. See, it's changed. Hello, everyone. That shows that free bindings actually works. So, um, then we will, uh, let's just say, I want to copy the text view. So, let's just copy the text view here into here. There you go. And then I want to make a button, right? A button on the first application, uh, the first screen, I'm sorry. So let's make some button or um, uh, let's make our life simple by just drag and drop. There you go. And then like, um, if you already uh, saw um, how to use constraint layout, I'm currently using constraint layout right now. Okay, um, let's say 16, 16, and then the width is all DP. Oh, damn it. Why is it? Oh yeah, uh, and then this one is going to the parent, and then the bias is upside. Uh, width is zero dp. It should be. Oh yeah, I forgot. There you go. It should be like that. I am sorry. There you go. Good. 
Now I got the button here. Um, and let's make the button ID. Um, uh, button move like that. And the text is, let's say, move to second activity, right? Uh, we do not need uh, on click because it's really uh, redundant. Um, you can just, um, you know, uh, use view binding, and I will show you later on uh, how to use that. Um, Oh, 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 what did I do? Oh, wait a second, let me, there you go. Um, let's go into the second activity. <sighs> Why? Okay, anyway, um, into the second activity, um, we will remove hello world and to make it different, we will make hello. This is from second, activity okay so it uh, marks the second activity well <laughs> so that you can differentiate within the second and uh you know the first activity so we will go into the logic side of the coding basically um so what we're gonna do we will um, make a new variable here um we'll do it on on view created, yeah. So uh, we're gonna overwrite something. So it's called on view created, on create view. Oh, why? Oh, sorry, it's on fragment. Never mind. Um, let's just do it here. It's okay. Uh, binding dot. Let's say button move. See, see. All right, and then you just go into like set on click listener. And just go there. There you go. That easy, right? It's really easy. So before that, we will make the intents. So how do we make an intents? Let's make um, move to second activity, right? It equals intents like that. And then the intents uh, here you can. Um, put in well uh a lot of things basically uh intent have a lot of uh i'm i'm sharing my screen right it's not it's not only you can see the slides again now i'm trying to search intent and then android studio can you can you see my uh uh browser good so here um um, yeah, so this is a really helpful um, web that you can uh, refer to. Intent. This is an intent. You can literally see the whole thingy here. Like, <laughs> yeah, a lot. Actually, a really lot, 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 lot. Right? Oh, even even the internet doesn't really support it. It's really long. You can see how long that is. Oh my. Yeah, so it, it's just like zone and zone. But uh, let's just continue here. Okay, so in 10, uh, uh, we'll move into second activity uh, class, such as. I think that's it. I, I, I actually forgot how to use the intent, actually. So because <laughs> because because there is a li literally a really simple way. There's a long time since I use intents. That's why I'm looking like how to use intents. I'm sorry, guys. It's it's a long time since I use intent because I will show you after this. There's a lot 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 easier uh, to use intents. I'm not kidding. All right? It's really easy. It's really really easy. I, I'll I'll say that. I'll say that it's it's really easy. Where is it? Oh yeah, what I am missing here is the context. There you go. There you go. So what you put here is the context basically, and this is the activity that you want to move to, right? And then basically what you do here is for um start activity. 
and then uh, you pass in, move to second activity. There you go. That's it. Basically, that's it. So let's just restart our emulator and let it build uh, for some, you know, for a few minutes. No, it's a few seconds probably. Yeah, there you go. Installing, there you go. So now I have a button called move to second activity. When I click it, there you go. We move into the second activity. See, let me let me um, try to I'll try that again. So I press back, move to second activity. I click, boom, we go to the second activity. That's how intense we're, right? So um, yeah, that's basically how intense we're. So um, let's just say we want to choose. Uh, this is called the explicit intense. Why is it explicit? Because you tell exactly where the intents want to go, which is the second activity, right? But wh what about uh, ex implicit intent? It's like intent dot. There you go. See how many intents are here, right? Action. Let's say uh, picture. I forgot the name. Pick. What is it? Let's. No, it's not working. Action gallery. I forgot how to. Let's see, because there is a lot, of, um, and these anything that is here is basically. Ah, let's just action dial, yeah. Oh, what happened? And there is no error about that. Oh. We do not need a context for that. Supposedly. They... There you go. See? When you go with a Nintendo Action Dial, um, it will pick any app that you already assigned on your phone to dial a phone number. There you go. You move into another application right now. See? That's how implicit intents works. But we will not use this for a long time, basically, <laughs> because I will show you the easier way, because this is r really, really, really complicated. Um, I will show you why. So um, I think that's it for intent, right? Uh, intent is so easy. Um, so before I continue, perhaps anyone want to ask something? Have any questions, perhaps, Because uh, before I continue? In case you you know you remember, so yeah. Uh, does anyone have any question before I move on into the next? Oh, oh sure, 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 sure thing. Okay, so let's get back into the slides. All right, window. Oh, sorry, wrong. So wrong window. Where's the window? There you go. Okay, so this is the correct window. All right, so where do you say? We ain't making static screens, right? We won't, right? So, well, now that we are talking, we already know how to make intents, right? We have um, the theory now to move from one to another, right? Now, how do you make or how do you update the view according to a data? or a list of data, right? And how to show the data in a list. Because most of the time, you will show the data on a list. For example, again, Google Play, you see the recommendation, or let's say the top three, it's a list, right? Literally a list of games or a list of application. Anything, any application would have these. So how do you make the list then, how do you show the list? Well, enter, recycle view, the list master. So we have something called list view actually, a long time ago, but now it been, it's not removed, I think, but it's still, uh, you know, deprecated. It's already been replaced by recycle view. Why? 
Recycler view is more efficient. It recycles every component that is not showing on the screen anymore. So whenever you scroll through the list, and then there is something that is not showing on the list, it will be recycled rather than um, list view, where a list view, well, indeed, it's not efficient. It's make a new list item every single time to every data, right? So let's assume that we have like 1,000 data. And in the screen, we can show like 10, but we can scroll it, you know? So we can scroll, um, but what's shown on the screen is like, let's say, max of 10 items, all right? List view, you will make like 1,000 list item, 1,000 view. It will generate for the whole data. Like if we have 1,000 data, 1 million data, it will make a million view, which is, well, inefficient, really. Recycler view, in the other hand, it will just generate 12 of them and then just recycle it. For example, the top is already not shown, then it will be recycled to the bottom, and so on and so on. It makes a loop. That's how recycler view works, right? So it's really efficient uh, as of now, at least. Uh, we do not have anything more efficient than a recycler view, but recycler view should do fine. So, yeah. Recycler view have uh, several components. Um, so what are the components for the recycle view? So the first is, well, obvious. Recycle view itself, aka the view group itself, because recycle view is basically a view group. And then an adapter, adapter class to be attached to the recycle view. So the recycle view will be attached to the adapter, right? And then we will need Another class called the view holder class to bind the list item into a view. Basically, um, as the name suggests, it's hold the view. So the class is functions as a you know view holder. <laughs> and the last one is a layout manager. A layout manager is used to arrange the list items, right? So again, recycler view is the whole view group. Recycler view needs adapter, and then recycler view needs view holder to you know to bind each view, and it needs layout manager to arrange the actual list that is shown at the view. Yeah, seems pretty hard, I know. But uh, so let's just go into Android Studios because well, it's um really hard one. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Let's go back into the Android Studio. Let me share my screen. Good. Now, um, we're going to make, uh, so let's just say, we're going to make something here. So we're going to remove the bot button and the, the, the text view. We're going to make a recycler view here. Recycler view, there you go. And then like uh, match parent, match parent, there you go. And then, oops, and close the tag basically. And then, yeah, oh, the ID, um, RV test, for example. Oops, sorry. Add ID, RV test. All right, so there you go. Um, yeah, so basically that's about it. Um, we will make a new layout for the list item, right? So we're going to make a cart view, but not here. We will make a new layout. So again, on the left panel, go to layout, uh, right click and a new layout resource file, right? And we'll go here, file name. Um, Let's just uh, mix the root elements is a cart view, right? And then the file name is, let's say, item list, list item, right? And then, okay, there you go. You got a uh, pretty much blank screen right now. And then what you do here, 
is well basically it's a card view um so yeah uh let's have let's say a padding or a margin margin horizontal let's say um 16 gp and then the margin vertical is 8 gp there you go and then here we'll just um make it really simple i but i cannot make it simple um radius card corner radius let's say um 12 dp 12 dp will be sufficient right and then let's make the elevation uh oh card elevation is uh, let's say 8 dp to make it more you know uh have some heights into it and then let's make a text view and uh, just uh, drag and drop um we'll make constraint layout all our linear layout here and uh, match parent match parent and then inside it uh, we'll make um let's say a text view text view let's say um Wrap <laughs> content, wrap content, and then text. Hello, I'm a uh, text. Right. Oh, uh, there you go. I'm a text. So yeah. Orientation is vertical. And then yeah, that's it. Um, I'm gonna do that, and then like um. Align test alignment. No, we do not need that for now. Or I just uh, change this into constraint layout because I usually use a constraint layout. There you go. Um, the text view needs to be constrained, so we will just constrain it into the very good one. There you go. Align the text, and then uh, well. 16, 16, 16, 16. There you go. Now, it's too long, right? It's really big. The, the, the card layout is really big. So here what we do is wrap content. We change it into wrap content. Uh, let it be match parent because it will match the parent, whatever the match uh, the, the parent will be. So here you see it's already like um, looking a bit better. I think I'm going to change the elevation to four because it's too dramatic. But anyway, there you go. Hello, I'm a text. I will gonna give this ID as um, list text. Um, ID list text, list item text, like that. TV list item text. There you go. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's about the list item, right? So here, we are going to make a new class. So what we are going to make is basically the adapter. So let's uh, make a new Kotlin class or file. So, you know, right click, new and Kotlin class file. And you go to the class and then you go into, let's say, list adapter. Right, class list adapter, and it will be made like that so now um you you will be wondering um what to fill on the class basically we will inherit the class called a recycler view dot adapter vh reserve dot. okay there you go so there's uh there are couples of errors here right you see that um it's okay so how do we you know um how do we then uh, solve the errors basically just see the errors here let's view holder you just um see unresolved reference let's view holder you just go to create class into here i i usually use it here class let's view holder inner right and then uh view There you go. There you go. We will solve that error uh, error later. 
And then here we got another error, uh, class list adapter the, is not as abstract and does not implement abstract based class member, which means the adapter is an abstract class and we need to implement the members. So we'll just you know click implement members um, and select all of them by clicking shift and um, you know select them all. And okay, there you go. So it automatically um, makes um, the function. We will just move it on the bottom for the class. There you go. So here, um, I will, wait, let me, um, okay, there you go. So uh, let me just go uh, into my uh, other project that is open basically for now um, because, well, it's it's okay to just uh, look into your uh, other project and just copy whatever is on the project <laughs> basically. So yeah, so um, what you do next is here, uh, we will use free binding also private for, Uh, binding equals list uh, what is uh, list item binding because I already said it will generate by itself right private full binding list item binding and then recycle a few holder just pass it binding dot root there you go All right good in case you do not know, I I, uh, I pressed Control Alt and L to automatically beautify the code. So, yeah. So this is the basic, um, you know, uh, basic uh, structure of an adapter, right? So the first thing here, we need a list, right? So let's say we have something called private private a list equals array list um, for now it's a string it's okay uh, there you go so list is now array list of string right so we have to make a method that um, where we pass the actual list into our adapter, right? Because our adapter will not, you know, update itself. So we'll make a, a, a function. So let's say fun set list, where the list is basically uh, input list equals array uh, list string like that. And then let's just set list. It becomes like uh, list dot clear, and then list add all uh, input list. There you go. And yeah, notify data set changed. Basically, it's already deprecated, uh, a bit deprecated because Google doesn't really, you know, wants us to do this because it will notify and refresh the whole recycler view, which is, um, you know, not really that efficient, but it will do fine for most of the time. So let's just um, do it right there. So that is it. Now in on create fill holder, we, we have like three different things here, three different functions that we need to override. The first is on create field holder, which basically means um, we are creating the field holder, which is this one. On bind field holder, which means we will bind something into the field holder. And then get item count means that we are getting the, well, basically the item count on the recycler field, like how many items are in the recycler field. So without further ado, let's see. The get item count, we can simplify it into list dot size because we do not really use um, anything in the adapter so we just can use list dot size here it's easy and then here you can see here is um, on bind view holder what you do basically is just um, 
you make a, a function here on the list view holder. It's called bind or something. It's, it's okay. And then bind is like uh, the data is string, right? And then what you do with this string. That's it. Okay. So uh, what you do on, on bind view holder? Well, just holder dot bind and um, list position. There you go. Because we already know the position here is already there. It's already sorted out from the abstract class. We also have this. So there you go. That's for the on bind view holder. Now the, on the on create view holder, we uh, make the binding. So fall binding equal um, equals to what is it called list item binding dot inflate okay so you can basically just copy paste this one there you go um it's copy pasted i know but you just can copy paste it it's okay and then just return a list view holder with the binding there you go they're finished basically for the list adapter the list adapter is just like that right good now we haven't really um do the bind function right so again we are using binding here view binding so what you're going to do is just binding dot tv list item text equals data oh i'm sorry dot text equals data there you go and there you have it it's finished basically we are ready to make our list so basically what i just did is making a list that will change this the text on this right so for example um in a main activity let's say uh well why is it oh yeah it's not there anymore it's not there anymore too so let's delete it and then like uh, we make something uh we we make a new uh variable it's called the adapter all right basically this is the adapter so list adapter all right we will late in it we will make it uh late initialized and then here we will like adapter equals list adapter there you go so we just initialize a, a class and then binding dot recycle uh we test apply here we can apply anything so for example adapter equals uh list adapter no i mean the adapter oh let's just uh change it um rv adapter to avoid confusion and then this one is a rv adapter and then um we already talk about layout manager right so the layout manager is the linear linear layout manager which is like that and then require context or I'll just go this main activity there you go so probably it's done for now but we don't have any data right because well um there is nothing to you know actually uh you know pass onto the the whole thing so what we're going to do next is pass a data so let's say we have a array uh, of string called uh, array of strings uh, it's an array list okay it's string and then um Oh, let's just array list string. Array list of, let's say this is first. This, oh, 
This is second. This is third. Okay. There you go. And then we'll just go into adapter, RV adapter dot set list, and then we pass the list array of strings. There you go. So it should work as of now. So yeah, let's just see. So let's run it. Hopefully there is no an error. Um, oh, you cannot see my emulator, yeah? Can you see my emulator or no? OK, let me just share my screen then. There you go. Uh, so here it is. Yeah, there you go. So you already made your first list. For example, we make uh, a really long one. Third, let's just copy this. Control C. Oh yes, there's a lot. Uh, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Seventh, just seven. Seven is good. All right, so let's uh, reload it again. Go into the emulator. And then now it's supposed to update it until the seventh. There you go. See? So that's how you do a recycler view thingy. That's what it needs, right? Good. It's, it's really easy, right? It's super easy. So, yeah. Basically, that's it for this recycle field. So yeah, let's continue to the next module. Uh, the next module will be the one that I told you earlier that we have another way to um, to uh, move from one activity to another, but we will not use an activity this time. Okay, so. Yeah, about the intents. So, well, it's the basics. Intents are good for multiple activities, but what if we want to make a single activity app, which, by the way, recommended by the Google themselves, right? So, please, welcome our hero for today, the Android Jetpack. Jetpack is a suite of library to help developers follow best practices reduce boilerplate code, and write code that works consistently across Android versions and devices so that developers can focus on the code they care about. That's, well, I just copy-pasted it from our Android Jetpack uh, website, but that's the official definition of Android Jetpack. So the first Android Jetpack components that we will talk about is a navigation. So it's called a Jetpack navigation. Well, what is navigation? Navigation here is, refers to the interaction that allows users to navigate across, into, and back out from the different pieces of content within your app. So, again, uh, we will use navigation for this one. So, I'll just open the navigation here. There you go. Navigation refers to the blah, blah, blah. And there you go. So yeah, um, it is really something that is cool. Um, I will show you later why is it so cool. So yeah. So first things first, we need to um, add a dependencies right here. So what you're gonna do? Um, let me just share my screen again. Share the screen. There you go. Let's make into the Android the uh, GDSC, and then we'll go into the build the Gradle first here. Build script ext, for example, and let, let's say uh, um, nav version equals to two point three point five, right? And then here dependencies. We add a new dependency called navigation. 
So here, we just copy paste it, basically. So Java language, we will copy the Kotlin one, which is this one, <coughs> basically this one. Just copy it. There you go. You do not use this anymore. There you go. <coughs> and let's sync it. Right. It's still, um, you know, downloading stuff because uh, we just added a new dependencies. So while that, let's make a new um, activity and then um, we will add a fragment, I think, but um, let's add fragment with view model. Um, so yeah, uh, just uh, add a fragment with view model. Probably we do not know yet about view model. We will discuss it later, but just create it. So the fragment name will be list main fragment. Okay, main fragment will be good. Main view model, let's say uh, home, home fragment. Home, home fragment looks nice. Uh, home fragment and then finish. There you go, home fragment. It's already creating something which is super nice, basically. Um, so yeah, um, basically it's already created for us, but I didn't really like the this one. So I just um, buy few models. There you go. There you go. So um, it will really <laughs> seriously easier, right? Look at that. It's really easy. We do not need this one also. Just uh, delete it. Um, just leave it like that. OK, so let's see again here. Uh, what we need to use uh, is a navigation graph, right? So navigation occurs between your app destination, right? So we will make an actual graph, all right? So let's say the second fragment, uh, we will use only the main activity so we can safely delete the second activity. Oh, what is it? Oh, in Android manifests. Okay. Let's delete it and then, oh, and the activity second, let's delete the activity second. Delete anyway, and then the second activity, delete. There you go. We just deleted it. Nice. So we now have home fragment now, and we will make another fragment um, called, let's say, a new, um, uh, where is it? Fragment, and then fragment of a field model. Again, let's say detail fragment. There you go. So finish. There you go. We got detail fragment and detail view model. Again, delete what we do not need. Just delete this one. This one view model by view models. There you go. Oh, let's import it. There you go. It's imports it. There you go. I just. Um, Okay, there you go. So view model uh, already uh, saved here. We will just uh, come back to this later, later on, because, um, oh, let's just set up one more thing I before I forgot, is the binding. So we also will use a uh, binding. Uh, for Binding equals, or let's just copy it from the main activity, basically. Just copy this one, go into the home fragment, copy, but we will not use the activity main binding. Instead, we will use the home fragment binding. There you go. It's that easy. 
Right. So here, binding equals um, home fragment binding dot inflate. Right. And the inflate is basically the same. Uh, if I remember correctly. Here, let me see on the fragment. Does it use binding? Yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Because I, I forgot things. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> but yeah, basically what you did. Oh, there you go. Inflate, inflator, container, false. Just copy it. There you go. Just copy whatever. And then return. Again, binding root, right. There you go. This is the first fragment that is on, basically. Good. Now, into the second fragment, we will also did the same thing. Uh, we will just close the, the other one that is not needed as of now. There you go. The detail fragment will be also the same thing. Home fragment, it will be like detail fragment binding. There you go. And then here is just, again, copy and paste, which is super easy, right? Uh, a binding, it will be an error because it's not the same. Detail fragment binding, not inflate. There you go. We'll delete this because it's not nullable. And there you have it. Um, it's already set up for a few bonding and few model, which, which we will use later. And yeah, so here, um, we will set up one more thing. It's called a safe arcs. So it's on a build.gradle here, somewhere, uh, let's see, there you go. Class path, we will add a dependencies now into the build.gradle. We will add it here, right? Class path, and then in the app, level where we'll just use plugins and then id this one right into here and then the plugins there you go so you add something in the project uh, level uh, the built in gradle in the project level which is this just copy paste and um and this one you add something uh, to use the actual plugin and then just sing now that's it um, that's uh, for the setup, that, uh, the build finished for a second. Well, that, let's uh, look up here. So, I already said this is a lot easier rather than going with, you know, intents. Why? Because you can see visually where you're going, right? Because usually you use intents for moving from one activity to another activity. We will still use intents for moving from one application to other application, but we will not use intents inside our application. So for example, you have like screen one, screen two, screen three. You will not move between all those three screens with an intent. Instead, you will use navigation. That's what navigation for. Yeah, so yeah, it's already finished, good. Now I'll build the Gradle, we can close it. Now, what we are going to do is we will make something, all right? So we will make something. So here, rest, we will uh, create a new folder. So new Android resource directory, and then resource type is a nav. Where is it? The navigation, there you go, navigation. And then directory name is navigation, let it be, and okay. And it will create a navigation folder here. Now in the navigation, that's new, and the navigation resource file, let's name it main navigation. Okay, and there you go. You got a visual editor for the whole navigation, which is super easy. What you do is click these to add a destination, which is here, basically. That's really small, but yeah, it's there. Click it, and let's say the home fragment is here. See? Home fragment is set up, and then the second fragment, which is the detail fragment. There you go. So now, how do you move from these to these? You just drag these to here, and there you have it. And you can even 
even, I say. You can even move um, with animation. So you can set any animation here. Now I'm kidding right now. It's an actual animation, which is so cool. Yeah, and you can even pass a value here, right? You can pass a value, right? So um, yeah, I think that's where the navigation sets up. Uh, we already have navigation. So here we got an action. So any action, this is an action. The arrow is an action. So action, home fragment to detail fragment. That's the name. That's action. All right. So um, we got the navigation editor here. And then what's next is we are going to add a nav host to an activity. Why? Because, well, we are now currently doesn't have activity for this fragment. Because if you remember, a fragment is on top of an activity. So we go into the um, uh, home activity. Where is it? Uh, home activity, layout, activity, main. They go, we're going to move the recycler field into the main fragment, right? Uh, we're going to move it into the home fragment, which is here, basically. We just delete it and put it there. And then this to list item, this item. There you go. All right. So there's the home fragment, basically. OK, so um, add an app host to an activity. So how you do it, basically just copy paste whatever it's in here, right there. Uh, so copy this one. Go into activity main and then nav host fragment, nav host, uh, just copy it, but just change the nav graph because we do not have that. So we'll go into the main navigation. There you go. Now it's directly showing the fragment, right? Because the home fragment we already set on the navigation here is the home fragment. There. So it's already showing the home fragment right there. Right. So yeah, it's it's that simple basically for the navigation. So destination you already added, designate as a screen start destination like that, and then let's just not bring any recycler view into this <laughs> because I need to uh, implement an uh, interface or something which is kind of more uh, advanced kind of stuff, right? Um, but yeah, let's just go. Uh, let's make a button, a uh, button, um, wrap con, uh, match pair and wrap content. And then like, um, yeah, that's it. That's enough, I think. ID uh, button move. Again, we'll just, um, we're just going uh, to move that and then and then text is like move to another fragment. I go and then and the design. Oh, it's a frame layout. Oh, sorry. Um, we'll change this frame layout into constraint layout. There you go. And then we're gonna constrain it there, there, and there. And then let's um, have some there go some margin, and then we are finished now. Um, okay, so onto the home fragment code, we already do the view binding. So again, what we do is binding dot button move dot set on click listener, and then you open the tag, and then this time though, um, you are not doing. Uh, so much things on this one. It's just two lines of codes, I think. So fall action, uh, fall, let's say, um, move to detail, let's say. It equals to um, home fragment directions dot action home uh, fragment to detail fragment. It's already um, automatically generated. It will be automatically generated. So yeah, and then, uh, what you do, I, for, I, for, I forget what's, what's next, basically. Oh, let's just open something more easy. Okay, 
Um, and then let me um, open this one. Wait a second. Yes, I forgot. I actually forgot. Let me. Why am I? Oh, there you go. Okay, so what you do is like view and then find nav controller and then navigate and then move to detail. There you go. That's it. Uh, that's about it, basically. Um, what you set on everything. Just just move it this. And I think you should good to go. Let's just run it. Uh, can you see the screen though? Uh, I mean the, the the emulator. Okay, good. Thank you. So let's just uh, let it build. Oh, 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 yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. Let's just uh, comment this one up. Uh, I forgot to comment that. There you go, built successful. There you go. See? That's a lot smoother, right? Because there is a animation in there, right? So, oh, there's a lot. There you go. You move from one uh, fragment to another fragment. And that's the easiest one. Because uh, why I say it is it, it is easier because you can see exactly where your application is going to go. It visualizes all the actions that is all there. So yeah, that's navigation. So let's get back to the slides again. Anyway, today we are just going to, you know, um, introduce you to some stuff. Um, so yeah, let me just go into the, okay, the slides. So yeah, oh, see, um, we will touch a bit about these. I will not really show it because I think we do not have enough time for today or we're just going to consume like about one or two hours for the next uh, session. But we'll just touch it a bit. App isn't built in a single file. We need to make sure it's maintainable. We need to make sure as a software developer, uh, as an intern myself, um, we need to make sure every app that you make is maintainable. It's easy to read. Basically, that's the reason why Kotlin exists, basically, if you ask um, you know, Google, because at that time, Java is kind of hard to read rather than Kotlin, because it, Kotlin is really concise, right? Compared to Java, Java is, well, personally, super annoying. So. We need to make sure it's maintainable. Making a good apps means that we apply software design theory onto the practical application, such as architecture pattern, solid principles, and the list goes on. There's a lot of things uh, and principles that you can see. And But one thing that we will discuss today, it's something called architectural pattern. Really high class name in it. Yeah, but why exactly do you need this? So, well, firstly, it clearly defines where specific business logic belongs, right? It clearly defines, it's, you know, clearly defines. And then it makes it easier for developers to collaborate because you can have a little time to just explain like what this is for, what this is for, what this is for, rather than just make it one, uh, one full, uh, you know, one, one file, you know, which consists of, you know, 10,000 line of codes, which is sucks. Rather than that, you will make an architectural pattern that is easy to use, already proven uh, efficient, rather than making a file that has like 10,000 lines, which is sucks and hard to read. 
and then it makes your code <laughs> well there you go easier to test um because um you can just test one component rather than the whole code for example you need to test uh one specific component if you have like in one file you need to test the whole file just to test that little components that's exactly the reason we need an architectural pattern and then as you benefit from already solved problems exactly what i said well that one liner code and then like uh, 10000 lines in one 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 file only it's really pain in the ass i'm not kidding it's really pain for you guys and let's just animate it you are like i i read somewhere i just read somewhere and in, in, in ig i think in, in instagram like give 10 uh 10 lines of code to a programmer and he will uh, make sure that he will um, have like 10 mistakes that he found and give him 1000 line of code and they will say it's fine why <laughs> because basically we are really lazy to read right especially especially codes especially especially codes because when you just hand it over like 1000 lines of code you will just like Meh. okay it's fine i'll not read it anyway blah 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 that kind of stuff and you're like literally hard to understand whatever the hell that code is doing right so it you know it benefits you from already solved problems and the problems it is that and the last it saves time and you reduce technical depth as you extend your app yeah for example you want to extend your app you want to make your app bigger you have let's say uh, you want to add a feature into your app right so you just want to add another class that's it rather than adding another a thousand lines of code in that already you know bulky ten thousand lines of code which is you know <laughs> i already said it. it is it's pain uh so yeah um so we're gonna discuss one of the most um familiar thingy uh in uh android uh development nowadays it's new it's not new uh the, the concept is a long time ago but um it's just recently being popularized in android and well perhaps any mobile application because usually people use model view presenter anyone have heard of model view presenter aka the mvp which is super old and then super generalized and like um many people use that seriously um a lot of people use that so here we go introducing nvvm or the model view view model so well mvvm is a structural design pattern that separates object into three distinct groups. The models hold the application data. Views display in visual in, uh, elements and controls on the screen. And view models transform models information into values that can be displayed on a view. See, it has some similarities to MVC or MVP, right? Well, here the presenter or the controller is uh you know replaced by v model so um in android it was advised to use these uh mvvm because it's the one that is uh, recommended by google but you can also use a more uh, complex one such as um domain driven uh, architecture or like onion architecture or let's say uh clean architecture and so on, the list goes on, or like microservices, micro front end, and uh, that kind of stuff, really complicated. But just to be simple, we're just going to do MVVM because it's the proven um, solution to Android development nowadays, uh, especially because, you know, uh, there's a lot of Android application right now. So this is the diagrams that uh, Google already um, recommends to us. So here, what you see is the activity or fragment, and then uh, it will request data into the view model, all right? And then the view model will request data into the repository. Repository will choose whether that data is on the server, uh, aka online, or 
uh, on the local database. Local, then we go to the model, aka the room or SQLite. Or if it's on remote data source, um, then we will go to retrofit and uh, you know do API calls, which will be probably on your third session, which is the next session. So um, yeah, sadly we sometimes change, right? <laughs> the data, obviously, not the uh, your relationship. No, 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 the data. So we sometimes change the data. So the data is constantly changing, right? Don't worry, we have live data. Live data is a life cycle aware data holder that is observable and can wrap any data, anything. You can pass a string, integer, Boolean, or even your own class, or even your own data class. It can wrap anything. Live data is immutable, means that it cannot be changed once there. While mutable live data, well, <laughs> basically it's mutable. That's why. So this is the observer design pattern and like how do we do observe, uh, you know, live data observation. Um, but yeah, basically uh, observable here is basically the live data. You put an observer in the activity of fragment and yeah, um, it will be observable, <laughs> observable uh, through the activity, uh, through an observer. So yeah, I think, uh, I think that's about it because I don't think we have enough time for uh, doing the live data. It will, it will be then uh, discussed again um, in the next uh, session because in the next session you will uh, be doing networking, uh, if I'm not uh, mistaken, uh, because this one is a bit more complex um, and it really, really uh have a really good connection with networking so i will just leave to a game for that one <laughs> so yeah that's all from me um perhaps i should hand it back to again again uh please take over oh thank you <laughs> No, oh, thank you. Sure, sure. I will. Yeah, you can ask me anything. <laughs> Literally anything, though. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> I also uh, put it there <laughs> so you can connect it with me if you want. So yeah. Oh, uh, wait, there, wait. there is, there the is a question. Yeah, yeah, there is a question. Yeah, good. Good, good, thank you. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Ankar, uh, for the question. Is MPVM being used at industry level mostly? No. Yes, but no. Um, yes, for some new starts up, uh, startup, but usually they will use uh other than mvvm such as clean architecture why because it's more maintainable than mvvm and it's easier to expand the project rather than mvvm itself so yeah uh yeah clean architecture no 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 uh because mvvm is um kind of just popularized these days 
Um, because of that, uh, many of uh, Java Android programmer use MVP. Even in big companies, they usually use MVP. I'm not really sure why they use MVP, perhaps because it's really widely used. Um, but yeah, on the, um, yeah, on the, let's say, uh, on some of my intern, um, we use MVP. So yeah, MVP is one of the widest, you know, usage, uh, have the widest usage of all uh, the architecture. But um, if we really care about uh, separation of concern, uh, which is uh, what a good architecture will do to you, is basically, um, I would say clean architecture and MVVM for Android. That will be a, a really nice one. But for, you know, um, uh, a project that is, you know, let's say you're a freelancer and you, you need to do a project, just use MVVM because it's really easy to implement. Uh, if it's a really big project, like you're starting a startup, you're uh, building a startup, then just use something that is more, uh, you know, uh, easy, you know, more maintainable, such as clean architecture. That would help in the uh, late stage of development because um, then um, you will just, you know, add another feature into the architecture and that will be easier rather than adding a new feature to MVVM. Because MVVM is more like tightly coupled rather than a clean architecture that is really loosely coupled because the separation of concern in clean architecture is really nice. It's really good. And that's why people use it. So yeah. And yeah, I hope that answers. And one more, I think. How UI of modern apps are made in Android Studio? Oh, that's a good question, actually. Um, well, uh, Lee, uh, would you would you explain what do you mean by modern apps? Oh, yeah. Uh, do you mean that, Ankur? Uh, yep, I mean the same. Uh, pardon me, pardon me. Uh, me, yeah, yeah, I, I'm just asking the same thing. Okay, what are okay. The... Exactly. So, um, yeah, the latest technology that is available is Jetpack. Basically, it's just a clone of Flutter. Uh, yeah, Jetpack is really, really similar to Flutter, which in the way is similar to Swift UI, which is, you know, Apple. But, um, I usually use XML to be honest, <laughs> because it's uh, even though it is really complicated and stuff, but I have more freedom in that, you know, rather than doing Flutter. But it's faster if you're developing using Flutter or Jetpack Compose, if it was stable in the near future. So yeah, but up until now, most of the current apps uh, such as uh, let's say Google Play, uh, et cetera, et cetera, still use XML. So, yeah. Exactly, 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 exactly. Because it's it's a bit easier to understand rather than Jetpack Compose, like, uh, yeah. But it will be faster if you already know much about Jetpack Compose, so yeah. I think from my perspective, I think XML will uh, be used for a long time because it's already in our, you know, uh, for us Android developers, it's already in our blood <laughs> because, well, yeah, it's a really old technology, but it also works perfectly well. So um, yeah, because we are already used to it and it's, you know, it's easy to use. It's not that hard anyway. So. Yeah, we'll probably use XML. In fact, um, let let me share you some uh, things that, again, in some of my interns, uh, we use still XML. We do not use Compose, <laughs> uh, even though that's new. Even though we are uh, creating a new stuff, uh, we are creating a new project. No, we do not use Compose. Instead, we use XML. <laughs> so yeah. 
perhaps it's answer your question, Anchor. Thank you for the question. So yeah, perhaps anyone have another question that wants to be answered live. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay, let's call it a good day then. Yeah, it's uh, been an honor. It's a pleasure for me to join you guys um, and be able to attend my first international thingy. So yeah, thank you also to your uh, GDSC, GTBIT. I'm, I'm so grateful to, you know, be here. So yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, if I have uh, a time uh, or something, yeah, we could do another one. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, guys. See you on the next session.